everybody, and then you'll learn to pick up after yourself. That's how my parents work. You can't take care of yourself, you can take care of other people and learn to take care of yourself. Go to the food pantry, go to the church, go wherever. So, as I started looking through um, some chapter seven masterings, I realized we needed to have a couple conversations about some things. There were some common misconceptions across the board. So, that's not chapter seven. Yeah, now I have chapter seven to pass out. So, what we're gonna do today is another one of those where you are going to be giving yourself your grade. So we are going to go over this question by question. So you need to have a clean sheet of paper because if you get a question wrong, you are not erasing. You are not changing answers on this test and you are not adding anything to this test. Your test stays exactly how it is right now, except you're gonna mark whether it's right or wrong. At the end of the class period, you are going to give yourself what grade you think this would deserve realistically, because I'm still going to give you a grade as well. So if you miss seven questions and give yourself a mastery, we're gonna have a conversation about what you think mastery means. Am I relatively clear? Right, so here's the flip side of this. We are about to go on a break, right? We have dabbled in chapter eight, like we just touched on a little bit, but chapter seven is really, really important to understanding chapter eight. So if you weren't able to finish the test, that communicates you needed more time to show that you understood this. So we are all gonna work on the progressing mastery when we come back. I don't know where yours is. It must be down the stack somewhere. Where is it? Huh? Chapter 7? You'll get it. I don't know why you have it. You should have only been working on it during like AO extensions, times like that, because I don't have them graded yet. If it's not graded, you should not be taking it out of the class. Huh? Right. And I don't know why you have it. Yeah. I thought you were asking specifically for a new if, if I say things that don't make sense, you gotta tell me that. <laughs> what, are, what are those things called? Thank you very much. But the, I, no, the thing you left us, the teacher. Excels, I can never remember that. This got in my grade list that somehow. Where's his name? I'm just oh, joking. Yeah. I'm totally joking. And Grace is right now. All right, so to reiterate, we are going through this question by question. If you get it right, put a nice check mark, smiley face, whatever makes you happy on your test. If you get it wrong, you need to put a circle around the number or mark it that it's wrong somehow, put an X by whatever was wrong on the separate sheet of paper. You're not modifying the green paper. On the separate sheet of paper, you're gonna write the correct solution. Any questions? Maybe. I bet you, um, this is Emma's right? Did you go with her to take it? Did you take it? It's green. You what? Oh, so yeah, so you like need one? Okay, I'll just give you one. So, when we come back in January, whether you did well on this or not, we're all gonna work on the progressing the mastery just as a review to remind ourselves, what were we doing in chapter seven? Where are we going in chapter eight? How do we simplify these expressions? How do we solve equations? All that stuff, because we're about to not see each other for like two and a half weeks. That's a long time to remind ourselves. So, we're gonna end reviewing all this, and then we're gonna start, here when we come back in January, reviewing it all and diving back in as we move forward. Justin? You said time for break, but will we be calling? Wait, what, say that again at the beginning. Will you be calling, can we call you? Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, I, the only thing I do is go on the shop and hang out with family, but honestly, we're all gonna be stuck in a house together, so if you call and give me a break for my family, that'd, that'd be perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. My family's great, but you know, when you like are with family for days and days, and you're just like, ah, get away from me. <laughs> but I'm taking a lot of games home this Christmas. So like board games and stuff. So we're gonna work, my smart board's being weird. I can't write on the PBS right now, so I have your test up here on the TV. We are going to work right here. So in number one, it asks us about what are like terms, what two things must like terms have in common? So when we think about like terms, what two things do they need to share? Justin? Same variable, which a lot of us had that. So make sure that you have same variable and what else? Because this is what people screw up and this is why I gave you the hint of can you add x, y, and x squared? What else must they have the same? Shane? Yes. So they need same variable and same power which another name for power is exponent. So if you didn't have both of those, it wasn't all the way right. So we keep getting in this argument, like not you guys, but the morning class, like what well, is it wrong? Because that's not the question. The question is, is it right? And if it's not right, that's what matters. Well, so that same variable, that covers constant because if it's same variable or no variable, then that makes it a constant. So yes, it could like, but that's not the two things. It's either gotta be same variable or constant and have the same power. And constants just all have the single power. Yeah. So what I did was I did like, I did like two X plus three X and I put that under like terms and then I did two X plus three Y and put not like terms. Yeah. But did you show anything about the powers? Yeah, and then I did, um, like, like, did you show that x plus x squared doesn't work? Like, we can't add it. So that's, you got to have the same power part. Moving on to number two. Number two asks us, um, I wish this would put the default in the back. Number two asks us, how many terms are there? And then what are the coefficients and what are the constants? So for my number of terms, we have 5x squared plus 8x minus 7. Every time you say an operation, you're splitting terms. So how many terms are there up there? Three. We've got the 5x squared, the 8x, and the negative 7. Then my coefficients, and this is where people started to have issues, Anyone remind me what a coefficient is? Andrew? Isn't it a number with a variable added on to it? Yes, it, and it's just the number. So a lot of people, for coefficients, wrote down 5x squared comma 8x. Those are your variable terms. Your coefficients are just 5 and just 8. If you had variables there, that's wrong. It is just the numbers. Questions on this? Just the numbers. Then your constants are the values without variables. They are constant, they are known. What's your constant in this situation? What is it? Close. At the top of your test, above number one, What's it say above question one? Everyone look at your test. Above question one, what's it say? Again, you guys, I'm trying to make your life easier. I'm not trying to make things hard for you. The sign in front of the term, seven's your term. The sign in front of it goes with it. It's negative seven. If you had seven as your constant, that's wrong. It's negative seven. You gotta take the sign with it. Uh, moving on to question three. I wish I could control both screens. That would be super sweet. Like from there, I wish I could reach out and like touch oh, the TV. Oh. That would be sweet. They have TV. I know they're way too expensive, dude. I'm just thankful that I got a new computer. Like, can't ask for too much. 
Number three is not really a trapdoor question, but number four totally is. So here's the dangerous thing. Do not look at multiple choice and immediately think, oh, this is easy because it's multiple choice. Multiple choice is actually harder because it gives you more opportunity to quickly make mistakes. When you have to think through an open response problem, not multiple choice, you think more. So when you're working on a test with multiple choice, I beg of you, please slow yourself down and check your answers. So number three is pretty easy. Which of those shows the distributive property? Anybody? A, 25 multiplied by B, 25 multiplied by C, you get 25B plus 25C. But number four, so three is A, check that. But number four goes a little weird. It says, which of the following demonstrates the distributive property? And when you look at A, it has two A lot of people chose that. What's wrong with this, with you saying that this shows the distributive property? This is negative, which means this, we gotta have that negative somewhere. It disappeared. This is wrong. It's C, because C accurately shows, I'm gonna write C out to make sure we understand why. So C is negative two times A minus three. When negative two multiplies to A, we get negative two A. But when negative two multiplies by negative three, we get a positive six. That's how C is your correct answer. If you got that wrong, please copy down this to remind you of why we got a positive there. It was this negative and that negative combining with each other that created the positive. Any questions? Can you guys tell that like everything is crisper now? Like up on the screens? It, it has a better, like the resolution is clearer. It has a better video, yeah, it's got a better video card. So the video card is what's like, so the graphics card sends to the video card, which has to do the outputs. So like, I actually have an HDMI output now, which I think you plug the TV in on it on VGA, so I can actually plug the TV in high def if I buy a cable. Mm -hmm. On number five, and guys, a lot of you, I want you to be familiar with different ways questions are asked, because I have no idea how the standardized tests phrase things, and a lot of times they're wanting you to be comfortable with different vocabulary. So whether it says rewrite, or simplify, or which expression is equivalent to, or like, and those are all just ways of saying, like, do stuff with this. And when it says simplify, you want to get it all the way to simplest form possible. So we have negative 7x minus, or sorry, negative 7 times x minus y. Lily? Yeah, walk me through it, please. Ooh, we don't even have to. I agree with you, we can, and it's just kind of like a placeholder. What? And then you would do negative seven times y equals negative seven times y. Yeah, so I'm gonna think through this whole thing. This red distribution is negative seven times negative y. What's a negative times a negative? Positive. Positive, so this really ends up negative seven x plus a positive seven y. Questions? Aiden, I love your shirt, dude. Simplify in number six. I should not set the pen down. The people you said in color to look at me yet. And color your feet just look way cooler than they really do. Makes it look like I actually know how to write. When we distribute this, this should not be a hard one. Two times the three gets us six. 2 times the negative x 
negative 2x. Check that you have 6 minus 2x, or you could flip this around and make it negative 2x plus 6. Either way, these are the same, though. So whether you put your x value first, that negative's got to be in front of it, positive's got to be in front of 6, or whether your 6 stays first, and it's 6 minus 2x. This is, this is an or. These are the same. All I did was flip where they are. So it's like 3 plus 4 and 4 plus 3. They're the same thing, just different order. In number 7, we have negative 3 times x minus 4. Yeah, so once I do that first distribution, we don't have to put a sign after it yet. We can wait and say, what is the next term I get? Negative 3 times negative 4 gives me a positive 12. So my answer just really ends up being, just to write it in the same color, negative 3x plus 12. In number 8, slow me down if you want too fast, by the way. If I move on or whatever, just tell me, like, hey, hold up, go back. Number eight totally changes things up. Now, instead of just thinking through how do I distribute and how do I simplify this, order of operations comes back in and becomes really important. So, Izzy, when you look at 12 plus 2 times m plus 9, what's the first thing that you're thinking you want to do? Now, that's the trap door. You start looking at this problem, and you read left to right, and while you're going left to right, you're like, 12 plus 2, they're like terms, I can add them, yay! No, you can't. This is not 2. This is 2 times a quantity. Explain to me what that means. So, I have to look at that 2 with everything else that's attached with it. Let's think about order of operations for a moment. Parentheses. Can I solve inside this parentheses? Can I add those? No, they're not like terms. Exponents, do I have any? No. Multiply, divide. Yeah. This is telling me to multiply. So that first multiplication, 2 times m, gives me 2m. The second, 2 times 9, gives me a positive 18. Nothing happens with the 12. It carries down just as a 12. you got to always follow order of operations. Do not get yourself too excited and start trying to do work out of order. We're not done, though. So if you stopped here, you're not wrong, but you're not all the way right. Because now, Jack, I saw you get real excited. What do we want to do at this moment? And then you uh, add the 12 to the 18 since they are like terms. We look for like terms. 12 and 18 are like terms. That it's gives me, yeah. I know, when I'm in Smart Ink, I can use more colors. So I, when we come back in January, because I've got a new computer, you guys are probably going to see a shift in how I teach a little bit. So we get 30 from those like terms, plus our 2M has no one to like him, and he just stays 2M. Gotta go find some friends, some other M's. Nine, right at the bottom of the screen. I'm gonna copy it here, but if you can't see it, um, you have it on your paper. Take a moment to look at nine and ask yourself if you did it right. Like, put yourself in in my eyes. Like, you're grading someone else's test. Imagine that it's not you. Look for mistakes. I bet you, you just like thought there was more work to do. This is totally fine. It's just not in simplest form. Excuse me. So that's the right answer. And you should have stopped there. This is not wrong because it's the same thing. This is equal to that. But because it says simplify, this is not simplifying. That's actually unsimplifying. So just stop there and you're good. 
like I would have, like if all of that was on there, I would have put a box around this and put a check mark there and just said like stop. Like, no, this is fine, but it's not simplified. That's the difference. Who thinks they maybe have spotted an error in your work now that you went back and critically looked at it? I do this all the time. Like, especially math counts, because those are really hard math problems. If you want to see me make mistakes, come to math counts. Um, it's actually, that sounds really bad, but it's that's how you learn. Like, when you try something and you screw it up, and actually, I was talking to the guy who brought me my new computer, the tech guy from Morgan. This is a good uh, like analogy or whatever. Make. He said, I'm not an expert. He said, an expert is somebody who has done something every wrong way possible that they know the right ways. An expert is someone who knows every wrong way or every way not to do something. I know I don't add these. You all should know we don't add these. That's the wrong way. The right way is we multiply them and we get 6x. 2 times negative 1 gives me negative 2. I then move on to my next distribution which involves the negative three getting distributed. That gives me negative three X, and negative three times negative four gives me a positive 12. This is where people make mistakes. Now, here's the thing. I could have put a plus sign right here and assume addition, but would I write plus a negative? Or instead, could I just write it like this and read it 6x minus 2 minus 3x plus 12. I can leave it just like this. I don't need to add in that addition sign. Don't make things harder than you need to. Now I look for like terms that I can combine. So I've got 6x. What is a like term with 6x? Jack? Negative 3x, which gives me in the end an x value of just 3x. When I go and I grab my constant values, I've got a negative 2 and a positive 12. If you owe somebody $2 and you have $12, are you going to end up with money at the end of the day? Well, if you owe them 2 and you have 12, I pay them back and how much do I have left? 10 bucks. Questions. That one is difficult. Yeah. Um, you just added your positives and negatives wrong, which is one of the things that we still, a lot of us struggle with as we go through the year. You've got to really like slow yourself down and think through the situation. If I'm at a negative two, and I go up, the addition tells me to go up by 12, I'm going in the positive direction. Or if I'm at 12 and I add a negative two, adding a negative really tells me to go down. But either way, my positive value has more power than my negative value. So then when I combine them, I get positive. So just be careful with that. So you, that should have been a plus 12, because the negative 3 times the negative 4, that should have been a plus right there, which would have made that a positive 10. Make sure that as you guys write this down, you're writing it on that fresh sheet of paper. So which expression is equivalent to that really grammatically, I should have tweaked that a little bit. I should have said like write an expression equivalent to or find an expression equivalent to, but either way, equivalent to just means write this in another form. So actually there were a lot of like, this was pretty open for how you could have written this. But if you have to start, you have 10 M plus two times M plus N. What's the first thing that I want to do here, CJ? I got to deal with my multiplication that's happening. So I do my 2 times m, gives me 2m. I do my 2 times n, gives me 2n. That is an n, not an m. 
and my 10M, nothing happened to it. It just carries down. Then, Bella, uh -oh. I thought you were raising your hand, but what can I do now? You can combine your like terms. I combine my like terms. 10M and 2M add together. Give me 12M. 2N, no one to add with. 2N. That's it. Eleven. Who can remind us what it is when we are factoring? How we do that? What we're really looking for? Is it asking me to factor negative two x minus fourteen? Factoring. Now, really, a lot of people get frustrated with this because they're like, "Why are we doing this? It's the opposite of what we want to do." In certain situations, you got to start by going backwards. Is he how do you factor? Now, in common, how? What do you mean? Yeah. What multiple they both use. So we're thinking, what could I divide here, and what could I divide there? I could divide them both by two, but here's the thing about trying to find the greatest common factor. You want to take out the most information possible. These are both even. Dividing by two would tell me they're both even. What are they also both? negative because the sign in front of the term goes with it your greatest common factor is actually negative two i should see a lot of people writing this down because when i leaf through this a lot of us had issues with factoring that negative two comes out front of your parentheses now because that will multiply in to get us back to our original problem but when i did this division what's left over is he careful how I did it, it's plus seven. So your answer, all written, same color, whatever, is the negative two times x plus seven. Here's how you check it. Distribute. So negative two times x, would that give me negative two x? Yes. Negative two times a positive seven, would that give me negative 14? Yes, we're good. Any questions? By the way, because I forgot to turn this off, there's an infinite tunnel in our video right now. Have you ever seen um, Inception? Oh, the I'm here being recorded. That recording is there being recorded. That recording is there being recorded. There's a recording inside of a recording inside of a recording. There is like math Inception right now. Any questions on 11? I mean, like, there's a tunnel of, like, if you set a camera in front of a mirror, it does really weird things. People have hypothesized, and this is, like, those weird writings, you know, about, like, people that have gone crazy and stuff, but people have hypothesized, like, there's alternate dimensions on the other sides of mirrors and through screens and stuff, so it's, there's all these weird, like, things you can think about to creep you out. Like, is there another you on the other side of a mirror? That whole sort of weird idea. I mean, you're about to have a two-week break. It's a great time to deal, grapple with some of those, you know, theoretical sort of life questions. If I look at eight and negative four x, what we're thinking is, what can I divide both of these by? Well, they're both even, so I could divide them both by two. But that's not the greatest common factor. Andrew, what's the biggest number I could divide these both by? Four. Four. Now, because only one of them is negative, we use our greatest common factor just as the positive. So that four comes out front of my parentheses. Then what's inside is what's left over. Eight divided by the four gave me the two. Negative four X divided by the four gave me negative X. You can have a one there in front of your X, but it is unnecessary. So if I check this, 4 times 2 would give me 8. 4 times negative x gives me negative 4x. Any other questions on 12? Expect that on the progression of the master, there's at least 
two factoring questions. I think there might actually be more because every year that's what people struggle with is factoring. But if you've got a firm mastery on the distributive property, factoring is just the opposite. So it should really go either either way. 13, again, is a simplification problem where you've got to pay attention to order of operations. So when we start 13, it is at 20 plus 5 times 2 plus Z. First thing I want to do here, Justin. Casey? can't do the parentheses. There are no exponents. Is there multiplication division? Yeah. So 20, nothing happens to it. It drops down. 5 times 2 gives me 10. 5 times z, 5z. 20 plus 10, then these are like terms. And I can get 30 plus 5z. And we're done. That is as simplified as it can be. Any other questions? Last one from the front page is only slightly different because it starts with a variable term. So it starts with 2z, then it says plus 4 times the 5 minus z. But again, order of operations tells me I've got to distribute first. So the 2z, nothing happens to it, drop it down. 4 times 5 gives me 20. It's positive, so I put plus. 4 times, I don't know, z. 4 times the negative z, negative 4z. And now look for like terms. What are my like terms up here? Andrew? 4z or negative 4z. Ah, negative 4z. What do you get when you combine them? Uh, negative 2z. You get negative 2z plus 20. <laughs> or you could have... 20 minus 2z. Some people like to flip it around and put the positive first. It does not matter, but remember, if it's in front of the term, it's got to stay in front of the term. Flip it over to the back. We are going shopping. So if I am buying some cans at the grocery store, and at first I don't pay attention to what they are, I just pay attention to the rack that tells me they cost a buck twenty-five per can. I don't even pay attention. Like, have you ever seen the chunky soup at, like racks or whatever? Where it's like they're all the same price. It doesn't matter what kind of soup it is or what kind of cans there is. It's all the same price. So if I had this is a buck twenty-five, 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 and this is a buck twenty-five, I threw five cans in my cart. How could I figure out how much that's going to cost me? Multiply five times my can. Now, I tell you these are chili and these are soup. Is that going to change what it costs? Yeah. No, because they all cost the same thing. So when we see a problem like 1.25C plus 1.25S, that's exactly what it's saying. Each chili or soup costs a buck 25. If I factor out a greatest common factor here, that's your dollar twenty-five is common to both of them. So we get a dollar twenty-five then times so what would be left over would be C plus S. And as we get deeper into our mathematical practices, I could actually make this a step easier and say, hey, I'm gonna introduce a new variable. T, you don't have to write the stuff in green. T is gonna equal C plus S. So I can actually say this will equal 
1.25 times t, which is what happened when I looked at all of these together. When I separate them, is thinking about it like this, $1.25 times the chili plus the soup. But if I put them all together, I know they all cost the same thing. So plus 25 times my total number of things. Now, this will come later in your mathematical practice where we start to have to try to really simplify things out and we replace variables with other variables. Any questions? Aside from that, I just went further than I really need to go. Now, um, 18, same thing as 15. 16, says so the last year drugstore introduced online shopping. So if we looked at all of the customers that the drugstore had last year, if we talk about all of something, what percent are we talking about? Andrew? 100%. 100. It's everything. It's all of it. It's, it's 100%. So they lost 45% of their customers, their in-store customers. If you have 100% and you lose 45%, what do you have left? Ooh, close. 55. Carry it far you want. So this C... What's in front of that C? The C that's by itself over there. Shane, what's in front of it? Really a one. So this actually represents 100%. This really represents 45%. When we do that subtraction, we get 55% of C or 0.55 C. The same basic thing happens on 17, except 17 has a gain of 20%. So we have an amusement park that has P passes that they sold last year. They built some new rides. They cleaned some stuff up. This year they sell more passes. How many more is 20% more? So really that P is 100% of P plus 20 more percent, how do we represent this year compared to last year? Dustin? P plus 20, P plus T temp. But if we want to put it all together, we could say this, is, does this year have more than last year or less than last year? More. So we could say this year is what percent of last year? Well, we had 100, we went up by 20, so we have 120% of passes, but we really write that simplified 1.2 times P. Because this P has a one in front of it. So it's really one P plus two times P, we get one and two times P. Yeah. Can you put like an arrow behind P? Yes. It is unnecessary. That is actually called a non-significant digit because it's not important. But I could also put a zero out here. It still says 1.2. It just says no tens, one one, two tenths, no hundredths. I could do no thousands, no ten thousands. So you talk about significant digits when we get into scientific notation um, and deciding where. Never mind, I'm not going to go too deep. For those of you that do watch the videos frequently, hopefully by me moving my mic, it will help the sound balance out and it will help us be able to pick up you guys. So, like, don't stress out about that. Nobody watches my videos. I'm not a very popular YouTuber. But hopefully if you're watching it to, like, get help, you'll be able to hear everything that's going on. <clears throat> In 18, same thing. I'm buying plates. I'm buying bowls. Each package costs $2.50. If I buy 10 packages, does it matter of which plates or bowls they are, or can I figure out the price? If I know the price is the same for each, and somebody like your friend, whoever shopping with you, tells you, hey, I'm buying 10 of these between plates and bowls, could you figure out the price? Yeah, right. It's 250 times what you get. This is the same as our chili and soup. So if I have $2.50 for every package of plates and $2.50 for every package of bowls, what I really have is $2.50 
times whatever the total packages is. Which again, if I wanted to introduce a new variable, I could say this is really $2.50 times the total number of packages. But T now equals P plus B. So T would be your total number of packages. Any questions on that one? 19 to wrap up says, I forget which problem this is. Oh yeah, Bella and Ashley are trying to fill a tank, but the tank is leaking. Now hopefully if they realize that it's leaking, they would stop and fix it. But in this problem, Bella can put in 11 gallons every minute. That's a lot. Ashley can put in 11 gallons every minute. But also every minute, 23 gallons are leaking out. Which expression up there correctly represents the situation? It's like a bleed. It is a bleed. That, here, hold on, I need your attention. That would be expression B. Bella's adding 11. B, the minutes Bella's been working. Ashley's adding 11. A is the minutes Ashley's been working. But every minute we're losing 23. Uh, oh, sorry, not every minute, just total. Sorry, so in total, 23 leaked out. That's why the 23 is not multiplied by anything. 23 was in total. So B is your correct one there. I need you right now on the front of this, what grade you would think if you were me or you were the teacher grading this test, do you think you've shown that you mastered this material? Or do you think you need a little bit more work on it? Either way, we're all gonna review this when we come back in January. But I wanna know what you think, be honest, then, Please try to not step on my cords. I know some of them are kind of coiled up right now and a little hard to get around. Please staple that paper that you were writing on with your test and turn it in.